Light this fire! It's all the rage now on crowdfunding, all the rage on Kickstarter, all the rage from the video game junkies jumping over onto the tabletop scene, right? But is it right for you? Should you actually buy it? Don't buy it unless let's talk. So slay the spire, climb the spire, build your deck, beat the baddies, beat the boss, beat separate spires, towers until you get to the end boss, win the game. One to four players. Contention games. Looks like a great, fantastic game. But is it actually right for you? Point number one. This is by far and away the biggest point that I'm going to put out there. The point that I see everyone mentioning. They're like, oh, this game looks great. But, oh, this game looks awesome. Oh, this game, but... Slay the Spire originally is a solo deck builder on the video game side of things. This is taking that element and condensing it onto the tabletop and making it multiplayer. That's the issue, folks. That's why you see a lot of people justifying it. Because they want the experience of Slay the Spire as a cooperative game. Now, this is interesting on several accounts because Slay the Spire in a nutshell, this genre of game is primarily not deck building, but the roguelike nature of it, those games are primarily solo on the video game side of things. Primarily, I mean, across the board. And the question always just is, how well does it actually adapt to a multiplayer version? Not even necessarily a, you know, one or the other cooperative versus competitive, but in this case, just multiplayer in general and specifically cooperative for this game. We're not used to having more than one of the Slayers, whether it be Ironclad, Silent, Defect, or Watcher on a team. How synergistic is this? And we'll talk about that in a second as point number two. But point number one is that most people just seem to be justifying it because they want to try and experience this, not just on the tabletop, not on the tabletop. They want to justify it because they want to play it multiplayer. And you can play this game right now. You can play this game on any significant other platform. I have it on my Nintendo Switch. I boot it up every once in a while. You know, I've got double to triple digit hours logged in this game. Is it going to log anywhere near that amount of hours on the tabletop for you? Because you have to have a group that loves deck builders because that's ultimately the question when you're comparing the two. Some of the love of Slay the Spire in the first place, right, is because it's solo, because you can slam out a game or two or three or four addicted back to back to back to back in a short time frame, whether you win, lose, or something else in between. The sense of progression is there. The sense of immediacy of gaining the progression is there. And to be frank, Tabletop is not going to bring that. It's not. This is going to be a one, two plus hour game, especially at the higher player counts. And it's not going to have that uh, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat cycle that the video game gives the adrenaline, gives the hopium, gives the uh, dopamine rush of. It's not going to have that. And when that wears off and you only play one of those games of uh, game night once a month or once a week even, is it going to have the staying power, the overhead amount of time that the video game side of things does? And maybe that doesn't matter to you, but that's where I see most people justifying it in the comment sections, Reddit, Board Game Geek, Kickstarter, whatever it may be, right? Like, I played it on the video game. I want to play it cooperatively. But if you can't play it to the extent that you played it on the video game side, are you still going to be happy? Are you still going to be happy? Point number two kind of goes into that. I'm going to delay the previous point that I was going to make number two. I'm going to bump that to number three because I think you have to talk about this. If you have not played Slay the Spire, don't buy this game. Don't buy this game. There are a dozen other tried, tested, and true, cheaper, available right now, deck builders. This is a game I see a lot of people being nostalgic for, having a lot of nostalgia feelings of the feelings that it brought to them originally when they played the video game side of things. 
Price point be darned. I'm going to zig when you think I'm going to zag. Price point be darned. I'm not going to say this is $100 too expensive. I'm not going to say $150 is too expensive. It's not. It's the routine deluxification crowdfunding uh, high level pledge nowadays period. So that doesn't necessarily concern me. I'm not one of those people that's going to be like, oh, it's $100. It's out, right? Like I had someone else just commenting on another post today that they bought the nesting box for Wingspan, which is like zero content for the, like the same price. So, eh, you know, your mileage may vary. But you can go try out this game to see if you actually like it for like 10, maybe $15 at most, right this very freaking second to figure out whether or not it's right for you. And to figure out whether or not you want the video game adaptation of those points that I mentioned of the replayability, the quick play, the immersive play, the engagement, the roll over from one game to the next, or not. Because it's not going to give you the same thing. And that's where the points point matters, right? Hundreds of hours for 10 or 15 or $20. This is going to be a flip of that where you're going to pay hundreds of dollars for maybe tens of hours. How does that make you feel? Now, number three, we're gonna go back to that a second. When, when we're talking about the Slayers that you're gonna be climbing the tower with, right? Like in the original game, you are just by yourself. You're climbing it solo. And I have to wonder, I have to think, there's been a lot of designer diary over on Board Game Geek, but the one thing I didn't see mentioned, and again, I'm maybe missing this, how is the synergy between these characters going to work, right? Is there going to be synergy? Or is this really multiplayer solitaire deck builder? Because that's really what it kind of gets into. Because this is going to go into one of the further points down the line. Is this game is supposedly very close to the original. It's adapted from the source material very, very, very closely. I mean, with some modifications, tweakings for the tabletop, obviously. But that's an interesting dilemma then. Because the original doesn't have an imposed synergy of dynamics of mechanisms that you can have one deck building asymmetric character play off another right like when you play aeon's end right you can have somebody whose powers complement the powers over here that boost them this way that boost them that way that boosts it this way you've got legendary marvel the deck builder going okay i've got these characters that i'm throwing in the deck that are going to synergize together whether it's you know team rocket and groot and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or the X-Men with the same iconography, the same keywords that are going to play off of each other. This doesn't necessarily have that, though, really, does it? Because all of these characters are designed to be played originally alone. So really, when you're saying in point number one, I want to play this on the table with other people, that's really all you're saying is you're saying you want to play it on the table with other people, not that you actually want to play Slay the Spire with other people because you're going to be playing multiplayer solitaire it's not being spirit island it's not being the loop it's not being pandemic necessarily in that sense the overlapping synergy cooperative nature is not going to be the same as those others and don't be necessarily thinking that it is because again i think you might be sorely disappointed if that's what you're going into it as as the cooperative nature and the cooperative sense of things that we traditionally talk about with this style of game cooperatively, but this deck mechanic as well with deck building. Point four brings up just that, that I just ended point three with, right? This is a deck freaking builder. If you don't like deck building, this is not going to change your mind. The randomness, the obtuseness of it, the um, just unavailability of cards that you may need as you climb is going to be frustrating for you. Part of the puzzle-like nature that people love about the original is that you are going to these markets, you're only getting a select choice of a few things, sometimes very useful things that you're having to decide between with your very limited resources and currency, or sometimes you're finding one or two in there that you're just like, oh, freaking yes, but you know, you've always played Slay the Spire when you have the Ironclad or you have the Silent who doesn't get one of those main deck you know, strengthening cards low on the spire in order to set your deck up for success. And if, especially if we have this cooperative nature and someone else gets a card like that and you don't, the balance may be a little bit wonky from that side of things as well. 
as just to go along with the regular deck building aspect of things where you're just drawing and drawing and you're not getting the stuff you need or it's coming in the bad combinations or it's not coming in the order you need and the shuffling is going to be there and the randomness and the chaos between your deck and the marketplaces that you're going to be running into and everything else in between and the relics that sometimes again are all over the place those random nature events if you're looking at it that's going to change because it's slay the freaking spire and 15,000 other people are getting it and you feel like you're missing out well if you don't like those things you're not going to be changed by this game folks you aren't so it's not a wolf in sheep's clothing it's a wolf do you like the wolf that you're getting or not point number five and this goes back to earlier the blessing of this is that it is, like I said, very close to the source material. I will also make the same argument that that is both a pro and a con when it comes to this. A pro because, you know, you know what you're getting, right? It's slay the freaking spire. A con because it's slay the freaking spire. The upkeep that the video games are removing from games like this make the flow essentially what it is which is just that essential because if this is a one-time slay the spire slog every time to climb it to the end of the game to reach the climax this game wouldn't have succeeded to where it has and to now make more of that to the tabletop there's going to be a lot of upkeep i'm not going to say the time is necessarily going to be that long but i have to think that at a higher player count, there is going to be a non-linear relationship in terms of that time spent. That's something that you need to be aware of. Like I mentioned earlier with the lacking of apparent synergy between the characters because they're designed to be played separately in the first place. I mean, again, that's great because it's staying true, but you're also not necessarily getting some of the liberties that would make this game more for those that are super hardcore but looking for something slightly different because that's also the thing right this is not going to be drastically different i can't necessarily in good faith give you a good argument to get to say that you need both of these you don't you know because there's there's something to be said of some of the other video game adaptations you know monster hunter world uh you know uh, Bloodborne that are drastically different from what the video game offers in the first place. And it's a boon in that sense that it's offering you stuff you are familiar with, but in a drastically laid out different way to engage your cerebral cortex in a slightly different enjoyable dopaminergic manner. And because you're so close to the original in this case, you're not going to see probably a whole lot of surprises. You're not going to see a whole lot of you know, like new content pop out of the woodworks or something like that. And you may, don't get me wrong, before the campaign ends. But right now, the other only incentive is foils. Which, you know, I, I'll be consistent here. I'm raking Spirit Island Nature Incarnate over the coals right now for not offering anything but foils as a reason to back it on crowdfunding. And this is more of the same. I don't need beta art. That's a fan service. It's a nice fan service, but it's completely unnecessary for a gameplay driven look as I am staying true to. And it's not giving me any other incentive right now to wait to pick it up on the secondary market, to buy it off of somebody else for two thirds the price, right? Has to be a thought right now. And again, because it's staying so closely true to the original, the upkeep that the video game that I previously mentioned does for you, you are going to be having to do it yourself. And that's sort of the blessing curse of tabletop, right? That's why we have seen a freaking resurgence of people wanting to go onto board game arena, people doing tabletop simulator, people doing those things as part of their routine, especially when they can't get the group together, right? Because if you're like me and you're having trouble getting your group together right now, you're gonna play tabletop um, solo and you're gonna be playing Slay the Spire solo on the tabletop. Well, if I'm gonna be playing that on the tabletop, why am I not just paying a 10th of the price or so and buying the video game instead and letting the game do some of that for me? Again, just, putting the argument out there because some people are going to want that some people like the physical aspects and if you're really wanting that physical aspect well absolutely go for it 
But these are the things that you have to consider about why you maybe shouldn't buy this unless they're all okay with you from the same standpoint. There you go. Those are my thoughts on Slay the Spire. Slay the freaking Spire from Contention Games over on Kickstarter. Let me know what you think. Let me know where you're at. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I don't. I don't. It's going to be an interesting ride. I want to see what else they got in store. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Stay classy. See you around.